Oh my god. Oh. What is happening? Oh my god. Hi everybody. Hello. Uh, is the mic on? Yes. I'm wearing Eric's t-shirt. What is that about? Maybe the light's a little bright. I don't know. So, so I was just telling Stephanie that um, I was on set all day. What is happening here? Okay. So I was on set. Um, on set. I was at the, on location. I was on location to do photography today for the next batch of Quilt Folk Foundry Quilts. And I mean, I look like, so this is a shirt from KEXP Seattle, uh, which is the best radio station that has ever stationed. I mean, it's, it's really great. It's a, it's a great radio station. Anyway, so, um, and it's in Seattle and, uh, and with, with sort of the hair and like the lack of, you know, I don't know. I kind of look like I'm in a 90s band. I kind of look like a 90s band cover. <sighs> yeah, I kind of look like I need like a guitar, you know? You know? Um, I don't know. I, 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 but I was running around doing photography and, you know, quilt photography, it's, it takes a lot of work. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. Quilts are heavy. Quilts are heavy and they, you got to drape them right and you got to make them pretty. And let me tell you, that quilt nerd library over there and my just general knowledge of like quilt magazines, commercial quilt magazines and books, there are some tragic quilt style shots out there. We haven't done that in a while because I don't like to be mean, but like, wow, like there are terrible, don't put a quilt you can't let it touch the ground. This is a rule, it's an unspoken rule. It's not written anywhere, maybe I should write the rules, but like the quilt can't, you can't drape a quilt on a wagon wheel, for example. And like, you all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. First of all, a wagon wheel, it, it, it's been done, okay? But it is a good structure. If you're gonna hang a quilt on a thing, the wagon wheel, it'll work, it'll work, okay, it's okay. You get tired of the fence, I understand. But, 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 but you can't fold, you can't hang the quilt, you can't drape the quilt on the wagon wheel and then have half of it hitting the grass and coming toward you into the foreground. This is a bad shot. It doesn't work, it's not good, it's bad, okay? You also have to watch out for the creases in the quilt. I don't want any hard edges, I don't want any like, you know, anyway. <laughs> takes a lot of work and they're heavy. So I've been working all day, man. I've been doing the work. Um, and you are here and, and I, you know, I, I can't complain of my life. I'm very, uh, very grateful for my life and for God's sakes, you know, it's good. Life is good. And you're here and it's Tuesday night and it's Quilt Nerd. Um, and uh, this isn't a show where I talk about my day. It's a show where we talk about quilts and we don't talk about how to make them really. Although sometimes we um, analyze how a quilt might have been made because that's really fun. Oh, oh yes. That was a honk because my parking, I have a car. I got a zip car to do, to take all the quilts to the, to the location and I have to put money in the meter. I really do have to do that. So, um, so, so I'll tell you what Quilt Nerd is about, then I'll toss it to Stephanie Cake and she can entertain the people while I pay money to have a car on the street. Quilt Nerd is about um, quilt culture and I didn't really use that term uh, in, in my life uh, in the quilt world. I, just, I, referred to the, I referred to like the quilt world, right? Magazines and uh, TV shows and books and quilt shows and quilt retreats and quilt guilds and and maybe quilts in like a in an art museum or art quilts all of the things the parts of the quilt culture i i just called the quilt world right but then there's this wonderful book called uh quilt culture tracing the pattern and it really changed my life and i realized that yeah i mean we have a culture of of quilts you know i mean there's a you could say there's a comic con culture i'm not equating the two but maybe we could but um i don't know i'm just saying that there's these you know there's a culture there's subculture and so forth and we really have a culture of 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 quilts in 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 the united states and around the world i mean there's people there's organizations there's institutions there's controversy um there are styles and trends and there's history a lot of history and so when you put all that together it really is a culture and i think like calling it that it, it lends legitimacy to it. And there's a dignity to that. Like 
we, we are in the quilt culture. And on this show, we look at quilt culture, the people in it, the people who were in it, who are long gone, um, the quilts that came before us, the quilts that may be coming. I don't know. We mostly stay, we don't talk, we don't talk a lot about the, the, the contemporary quilt, which is to say the modern quilt style. We just, we, it, not because we don't love it, of course we do. But perspective is so sweet and you know, it's like, wow, you know, to have perspective uh, on things. And like, I don't have any perspective on myself or like today, but there's perspective that can be had like on like the past a little bit because enough time has passed. So we look at stuff from the past. And we're a bit anyway. So, so not tonight. Tonight, we're going to look at quilts that are in your lives. Tonight is a quilt nerd on parade show. Quilt nerd on parade. So you all, some, 12 of you have sent, uh, because that was the cutoff. We have to have a cutoff. So, so I have 12 uh, participants in the Quilt Nerd community. And tonight is a Quilt Nerd on Parade show, uh, Quilt Nerd in situ. In situ. What is it, Stephanie? What does it mean? There, there's a, I know that there's a much longer definition that's about like in its place or whatever, but essentially it just means like yeah. being used as it was or in, in the place it's meant for. Okay, okay. So, so we have photographs from quilt nerds that are taking, they, they took pictures of quilts in their house, like being yes, used on a, in, bed, or, on a wall, exactly. on a dog, yeah. like where, whatever it's yeah. meant to be. <laughs> on a dog, in situ, okay? Sit, in situ. Oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where's my, where's my thing? Yeah, okay, wait, that wasn't very loud. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pay the parking meter and I'm gonna introduce you to Stephanie Cake. Stephanie Cake is called Stephanie Cake because that's her Twitch handle, Stephanie Cake. And Stephanie Cake is a gift, and she is here on the show every week. I just love her so much. And Stephanie Cake, you're in you're in Maryland. How's Maryland? Uh, you know, it's okay. It's uh, neither good nor bad. Yeah. It's just, meh. Yeah. yeah, we had a really hot day yesterday. It was much better today. Yeah. Meh. Yeah, okay, great, great. We'll take a cake break in a little while and you'll talk about your research and you're researching uh, this fascinating person and uh, extend time. Okay, uh, two hours, yes, $9.50, sure. I mean, do I have a choice? No, Chicago, I don't. Okay, that was it. To be fair, that was pretty easy. Um, so, but did you get to do stuff today? Like, did you get to do some research today or, yeah? I did a little bit, you know, I had a very, very productive day yesterday. I did research stuff i did some personal project stuff i did the grocery shopping household stuff oh, great and today i took it a little easy i gotta admit nice, <laughs> nice. you earned it that's good that's good that's a that's a yeah, work-life balance um, yeah. i feel a little guilty sometimes i mean i know you're like a hummingbird you go 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 oh oh and but i have guilt all the time about you, everything yeah yeah you have guilt that you're not working hard enough yeah, or fast yeah, enough whatever yeah, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I it's taken me almost 50 years to understand and I, I'm not joking. Yeah. 50 years. I'm going to be 50 this year, you guys. It's just no 50. surprise that I'm tired. Yeah. I'm of working hard. Yeah. yeah, it's like, how are you feeling? I'm tired. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> like, you've been on the earth for 50 years. It's very difficult. Right? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. I mean, everyone is. And uh, yeah, let's do this show. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, um, I can't wait to see in situ quilts. Oh, yeah, they're going to be amazing. They're going to be amazing. And this quilt behind you, I got to know more because it's like all my favorite colors. Right? Oh, good to know. Did you hear that, everybody? Stephanie's favorite colors. Okay, so let me get small and let's talk about this. So, help, help, I'm small. You see how, look at this oversized t-shirt. It's so cool, though. I feel like, okay. So, um, so this, so this is an interesting quilt. So the quilt, uh, the intro quilt, it changes every time. And by the way, hello to everybody, Naflinster and Yakamo and Kathy. Hello. Jay Dan Stewart, it's great to see you. Robin, Robin subscribed at tier three tonight. You resubscribe. You've been subscribed for 21 months to this show, which is about as long as this show's been going on. Um, I love you so much. You are a good person. <laughs> um, and I appreciate you. And Cranky and KP Sos and Hicks, thank you so much for subscribing at tier two. You've been subscribed so long. You're so great. I just love you so much. Um, everybody, Fiendor coming in with that music. That music. We got so much to do tonight. I, I can't say hi to everybody. Hiroko, I see you. Eva, I see you. You're on the show tonight. Uh, a nun maker. Yes. Mm hmm. Yes. I see people who are on the show tonight. And uh, welcome, Baskets. Yes, a visitor. Someone. Hey, Slim Quilt Pants. Um, 
when I start reading names, it's funny. When I start like saying hi to people in the chat, it's dangerous because I, I hate to not say hi to everyone. It feels bad, um, but I can't do that. I can't do it every time. So, hello. Okay, so this, uh, this intro quilt tonight, an interesting case. So here is the shot that you just saw. I got small, but I could, I could be a little smaller, don't you think? Okay. Um, this is a, a quilt that was for sale in 2022. It was purchased. Here's the full. This is the, this is the quilt. I found it, uh, and Cake, I sent you the link, so Cake will probably put, hey, Finn McCool's mom, hi. It's great to see you. Um, um, this I found this uh, on an auction site, Brink Auctions, I think it was. Um, it's that link I put in Slack, and 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 it's it's sold, right? It's it's sold already, it was sold in 2022, which is now a long time ago. But it's so interesting, right? It, and it was sold in a lot of four quilts, and if you visit the link, you'll see that um, three of them were that they're very interesting quilts. But this this is really something. I mean. You know, I find things online. I'm always looking at the stuff. I'm always like investigating this and that. And, and I let my fingers do the walking and I, on, on the internet and also in the library over there. And when I find something cool, man, you know, I just, I just copy the link and I, I save it for myself. So this picture isn't amazing, but let me, let me actually, here, this is the full quilt. So, it's, it, so it was uh, 1930s, circa 1930s, which is interesting. Lone Star quilt, 1930s. I, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little bit later than that. Of course, when you do Circa, and let's look at this detail shot because it's great. When you do Circa, I mean, I think it's, what do you get, like 30 years or something? How, I mean, maybe it's not 30, but it's is something. There a rule? I didn't know. There is a rule. No, mom said it the okay. other day. Mom said it the other day, okay. and I can't remember what she, somebody in the chat will probably know. Um, oh yeah, Brunk Auctions. Right. When you say circa. I always thought you could, you're like a decade of circa. A decade. I, thought, so. I thought I thought so too, so. but I think it's longer. I, okay. I Ten years either way. So. Okay, and Finn McCool's mom would know because because she's in the quilt biz. Ah, okay. Ten so if you say circa years. 1930, it could be 1920 or 1940. I, yes, that is that is. So it's somewhere in that span. Somewhere in that span, and I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, I not an appraiser, not a. Um, a quilt historian who specializes in you know the fabric of the time or whatnot but i don't know there's something about this polka dot look i'll just tell you what my brain is saying to me that there's a certain polka dot this is probably ridiculous i mean barbara brackman is probably like in kansas right now being like Ugh! someone is saying something totally idiotic about quilt history but of course in the 1930s there were polka dots but there's something i swear there's a bigger polka dot that starts to happen in the 1940s Damn it. And I, God, God bless it. I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like this is a little bit later, but what do I know? I don't know much. And um, there's also none of that green in this quilt. And I realize that depression era quilts don't have to have that like Nile green color. I understand that. Maybe there's a little bit up here. Fine. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's not 1932. I just do. Um, whatever it is, this piecing knocks me out. I mean, this is app, it's, is it appliqued on top of like Lone Star? What is happening here? What exactly is happening with this piecing? It, it, it looks like the diamonds were cut up out of something that was already stripey. But then that middle part looks almost like applique. Okay, know. okay, okay, hang on. I just saw something. I don't know either. Some of the reds look like they they were like almost strip pieced or or something like that and then they were just cut into diamonds. Yeah. I yeah, like know. the Okay, 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 okay. So look at this this pink this diamond here is like that solid pink and then the sides I mean, did they pee? And then here you have the red, the solid red stripe in the middle, and then the sides are this polka dot. Like, did they do that? But then it, the, the, then that that doesn't. What are people saying in the chat? Hey, Mark, dull scissors. Yeah, exactly. Frugality says Finn McCool's mom. It looks like uh, the diamonds have trips down the center. Yep, yep, strips down the center. Yes. Uh, revamping an old quilt, possible. Hey, Grits and butter. 
Um, what did Jay Dancier say? I love this, say, it says Jay Dancier. It doesn't have uh, the typical Lone Star Precision. It's probably why I like it. Same, same. It's a Quilt Church moment. It's true. Because this thing is cool. It, it looks, there's something about it that looks like leaves, like like leaves, like, like, like um, you know, like uh, flower petals or, or something. Like he loves me, he loves me not. You know, she loves me, she loves me not. There's something so delicate about it. And the colors, I mean, you got it. Let's look at the whole thing. Just, um, I love looking at that detail. I, I mean, th this is probably gonna be my desktop picture for a long time. It's just so nice. But the color play, the color decision's very smart. I mean, you know, by the way, I encourage anybody, this quilt is long gone. It's, um, I mean, it's, it was made a long time ago. We don't know who made it. My friend Elizabeth Townsend Guard is, uh, there's a book coming out on quilts and copyright and designs and things like that. But, but, um, but when you see older quilts like this and they are not attributed to anybody, they're, it's a lone star, there's a variation on this, but like if you take a screenshot and make a quilt that is inspired by this, like a thousand percent you should do that. The world is big and it's full of ideas and you make it your own and you, you know, how fun would it be to try something like, look at this thing. Wow, you know, like if this inspires you to make some kind of wacky Lone Star, like that's one of the best things that could come from this show, you know? So anyway, any other thoughts, stuff? I mean, do you, do you, look at this, it's so great. Sorry, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, just looking at it, it's almost like the they weren't happy with just the regular Lone Star and they wanted to show maybe more like the, the, the star bursting, like kind yeah. of because it has movement, it has movement. It does. It really, really She'll does. You'll also notice that one of the other four quilts looks like it could have been an import. Really? Interesting. Finn McCool, I gotcha. I gotcha. The autocorrect, you know. Um, hey, Saucy. Strip piecing then cut. Interesting. Um, hey, Lisa Makes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, they made a star without a pattern, says Wonky. Yep. Yep. Fascinating. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so... Yeah, I mean, wow, loving this quilt. Blows your, it blow, drink wine and so Lynn. Uh, yes, I think it, it blows my skirt up metaphorically as well. I really <laughs> like, I've never heard that before. I really like it. It blows my skirt up. You know what, I love this quilt. It just blows my skirt up. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know what, it's pretty cute. Okay, so that's our intro quilt. That's the, that's, that's, that's what it is. So, okay, here, here's what we're gonna do. So we've got these wonderful, quilts from everybody. Oh, I did want to say hello to the Facebook people. So we multi-stream. So the show originates on Twitch and it is that way because I love the platform and it's different and I just like gotta be me. I just gotta be different. I don't know. But um, if you want to subscribe to the show, which is a great idea because you get entered in the giveaways and you don't have to watch ads. If you subscribe, you don't have to watch the ads. And then you also support this show and the way the world is right now, like content makers, like I don't know, the, the internet has been free for a long time and like people give stuff away, but, but like, you know, the, the, more, the more content that you kind of zero in on that you like, um, it's, it's, it's support those people who make that content, like become their YouTube member or subscribe to their Twitch channel. You know, it's, it, it's really, it takes a lot of work to make content and I love making this show and I wanna, I wanna make it a long time. So to subscribe to the show, um, come to Twitch and Jeff Bezos, Uncle Jeff, he owns Twitch. You don't have to be afraid of it. It's a it's a platform quilters have not used before, but we use it now. And uh, but we multi-stream to Facebook and over on YouTube as well. But if you want to participate in like all the fun stuff and like the polls and things. By the way, we did a poll last time about who was a person who liked ranch. We we got into a discussion about ranch dressing. I forgot to give the results. 64% said no ranch. I was surprised. I was surprised by these results. Anyway, if you want to vote in the polls and do all that fun stuff, um, come over to Twitch. Don't be afraid. Um, and then uh, before we get into this next thing, the, the, the main event, um, yeah, there's a schedule announcement. If you weren't here on Saturday night, there's a schedule announcement. So starting in July. It's a big deal. Took a lot of thought and a lot of um, input from trusted my trusted advisory committee. <laughs> um, starting in July, the, the show is going to be one week off. I should put it better. Three weeks on, three weeks of shows, one, twice a week. My God, quilt nerd as you've always loved it. And then one week off. 
because the, the level of stuff that's happening right now <laughs> in my life and in your life and in everybody's life and for the benefit of the show so I can get like other things done for the show and for like, you know, work and life and stuff. Um, this is this is great. This is great. And everybody on Saturday, I mean, I, I don't know. I suppose people who were, really weren't into this idea maybe didn't pipe up because they're just nice, which is fair. It's fine. It's fair. But um, people were super down with it. They were like, yeah, like that sounds great. Right, Steph? You saw that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I know I think we had mentioned it earlier, but you yeah. guys mentioned it again, um, doing or doing three weeks live and a week of reruns because you can oh, yeah, rerun that's right. your old stuff oh, that's right. that has been – dropped off you know that isn't available anymore yep you can get some reruns exactly so so indeed yeah oh my gosh thank you for reminding me of that so there will be a broadcast but it'll be a rerun and like i mean if seinfeld can do it we can do it so so yeah so there there will be um content every week um but we'll be live three weeks out of the month and then it'll be rerun so so this is a very very cool idea it came from uh one of you and uh it's it's so so good okay so thank you so much and welcome to the youtube people and welcome to the facebook people and let's do this okay so we've got the quilt uh quilt nerds in situ show tonight 12 people who have shown us quilts from uh quilts in their homes if we have time if it makes sense if 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 I have this other thing. I have this other thing. You know, everybody loves a controversy. Everybody loves a scandal. Just, you know, get the popcorn. You know, we always love, you know, when somebody acts out, right? And this is just the way people are. So there was there was a big dust up in the 90s, in the early 90s. Yeah, I was reading about this. Uh, there was a whole thing in American Quilter Magazine, which was published by AQS. In 1991, 1992, like it was like this war of the words in American Quilter magazine, people going back and forth about what defined a quilt and whether it was art or who could make an art quilt. Some people said, you know, only prof prof uh, professional trained artists, you know, formerly trained artists could make quilts. And people went back and forth. And I've got, I got copies of these for this thing that I'm writing. And, uh, I mean, I wanted to read you one of these things. It's interesting. We'll see if we get to it, but it's on deck. And if I don't get to it tonight, because I want to give the nerds the space and time in the show, if we don't get it to it tonight, we'll read it on Saturday. It's fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, from 1991 and 92. We'll see. Okay. Um, hey, Jake Home Jellies. Summertime and the living is easy. Take time off is good. Hey, man, girl. That's what I'm saying. A little champagne. Okay, so um, when we do the Quilt Nerd on Parade, subscribers to the show get to submit. Uh, I mean, they submit. It's not like, yeah, I don't go through and be like, no, not this person. Um, anybody who submits uh, gets to be on the show. <clears throat> and this time, yeah, we talked about, we, we said uh, the next Quilt Nerd on Parade will be this in situ show. So take pictures and share the, the story of quilts in your home, in your life. Uh, and this is an image from our very own Dee Marie. Yeah, Dee Marie. So what I think we're seeing, yeah, that's the wall. So that's the, the corner of the wall there. So, so I'm going to look at this beautiful display. So Dee Marie, you know I love you. It's been a long time. We need to catch up. Um, but I'm going to tell you what Dee Marie had to say about her about this photograph and about these quilts. And I can kind of scroll down and we can zoom in and we can see all these wonderful things. Okay, so Dee Marie, uh, and the question, the question on the forum is, you know, tell us about this, this picture, tell us about this quilt. Uh, Dee Marie is a woman of few words and she says, six quilts, um, cafe, wallpaper, wallpaper, interesting. So there's a cave, there's a cave quilt here, uh, log cabin on point, and Dee Marie, pipe pipe up in the chat if I say anything wrong or if you need to clarify. Log cabin on point, you, using 30s reproduction fabric on point. You know I haven't set a log cabin on point in my whole life. Me neither, but I love that 30s fabric, that, and I yeah. do like how she set that. I do too. That's so. You know what? That's what I do. I invented it's fabulous. It's really, really fabulous. Um, fascinating. And that thin sashing, well done. 
Demarie. Well done. Um, uh, bow ties. Yep, some bow ties. Adorable. Uh, Civil War Cross. Civil War Cross is going to be up here. Lovely. She's good with color. I, I've seen her work before. She's very good with color. Um, pine Bark. This is a great block. That's great. It's really great. Civil War. Hey, Cranky. Um, and Padma High. And then uh, Variety. Yes, Slim. Totally. And then, hold on now. Pine Bark. So this will be Pine Bark. That's interesting. Oh, look how you've done that with the low, the low volume. Interesting. Sewing the same print to the same print, but with different parts of the print. That's that's very that's clever. You're good, Demary. And then an American Jane log cabin, all made by me. American Jane log cabin, interesting. Most of them machine quilted by your delightful sister, who's very talented. Um, these are wonderful. I love that they're on display in your home. I think they are. I mean, maybe you just put it out for us for this, but. It's, I, I don't know. I feel like they're out. I don't know. It doesn't matter. This is great. You are um, a dedicated quilter, and we are glad that you are here. Well done, Dee Marie. Well done. Um, next up, Ms. L. Riggs. You know what? You are. You are. Hang on now. Hang on. Don't. Don't. Don't do. Hey. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't. I don't like that. I want to get rid of. Hey, you know what? Sorry. Um, L Riggs, you are um, very uh, kind to this show. You are a person who has uh, done much in the way of gift subscriptions and stuff. You give away gift subscriptions, and it's it's you're you're really you're really valued. And and I think you know it, but you know, I like to tell you. Let me just uh, do this and do this. Yeah, great. Okay, I just want to get rid of that stuff. View, inspector. Usually I can just get rid of it um, by myself. I don't know why I can't. Hold on, hold on. I love this baby. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Okay, great. Um, that's a baby who no, no, stop, stop. <laughs> eh. This, you know what? This rarely happens, and I'm trying to praise you, Lisa, and then this, this happens. Okay. Rotate canvas. Great. We're back to the baby. I don't know why I can't. Ah, uh, there. Okay. For heaven's sakes. All right. Lisa. Lisa, are you there? <laughs> Do you forgive me? Um, so here's what L. Riggs has to say about this, uh, this quilt. And let's make it big. Okay. So, quote, this is more a tale of the memories, says L. Riggs, uh, that are wrapped up, <laughs> see what I did there, in our quilts. Uh, more about that than the quilts themselves. I know we have a three picture limit, but this story needs four. L. Riggs, you know a guy, you can do whatever you want. Um, a boy and, a, and his duck and his, sister, his sister's quilts, okay? Who cares about the quilts? Look at that baby, oh my God, this baby, I can't. Sweet Seamus, I'm pronouncing that right, right? S-E-A-M-U-S, cake, that's Seamus, right? Okay. Sweet Seamus snoozing in a snuggly sea of quilts. Say that five times fast, Mary, ha ha ha. Um, that's a grand, number three, it's grand number three. Okay, his mama sent me this picture a few, few days ago. He, a few days ago, really? He was born in November and he's had a long road. This picture may be the first time he's ever slept in his own bed. It's a big deal. Wow. He's laying on top of a quilt that I made for one of his siblings. It's black and white and very graphic on the front, uh, but you can see the back of it there. Okay. Okay. The quilt covering him, okay, the quilt covering him is the first one I made for his big sister. Okay, grandkid number, okay, he's grandkid number three. Got it. 
grand number three. His big sister is grand, grandkid number one. Um, the quilt is made of the softest cotton lawn and, it, and is called All the Wishes because I quilted it with the words of all the things I wished for her. It's full of good vibes. Okay, picture number two is the front of that quilt. Great. By the way, I did make him a couple of quilts of his own. Let's just assume they were in the laundry. <laughs> While they were in the hospital for Seamus's most recent heart surgery, wow, my grandmother sent her big girl quilt to her mom to wrap up in so that she will know she's loved. She will know she's loved. And that is pick number three. Wow. Oh my gosh. The two older ones stayed with me while mom, dad, and Seamus were at the hospital and we made their first quilt fort. And this is the quilt fort. Lisa, you're doing a great job. Oh my God, it's the quilt fort. <gasps> That's at the, oh my. Grandkid number two is hiding in there with his sister's Kindle. Oh my God, I didn't even see him. I couldn't figure it out. There's a little pumpkin in there? For heaven's sakes. What an adventure. My daughter says that they now build a fort two to three times a week. Well, that's approved by, that is quilt nerd approved for sure. Um, and Elrig says, quilts are just a ubiquitous part of their lives. I love how many of their early memories will have quilts in the background and how both the quilts and the love and the memories will be around long after I'm gone. OMG, I love quilts so much. <laughs> um, well done. Uh, this is really, really cool. I'm so glad that he's home. I'm so glad that he's home. And you know, yeah. Anybody who's dealt with hospital stuff, when you go home, that's a big deal. I mean, you're better. You just, you know, because otherwise you're not going home yet, you know? So that is very cool. Everybody here I know wishes you nothing but love and this little baby. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Really, really good. Great to have you here. Great, great person in this community. And if you're new, I got to tell you, this... Uh, this community is really great. The people who are attracted to this show, they're kind of cool. Like Drink Wine and Solin. Whoa, like Drink Wine and Solin. You're, you're up next, girl. Oh my God, okay. What does Lynn say? I've been a long time collector of Anna Maria Horner fabrics, and I was waiting for just the right project to be able to give scrappy piecing a try. So, wait, give it a try? Look at these blades, look at this Dresden plate. I can't. Um, drink wine, so Lynn says, I'm a bit OCD, so scrappy isn't easy for me. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, this pattern and tutorial was offered free on the Janome website, and I was obsessed with this quilt. I worked on piecing the fans while hanging out with my friends, Kay and Dee of Picking Daisies in St. Luis Obispo. Oh. Um, they were of great help and encouragement to me. Wait, hold on, there's another picture. Oh, yes. Ooh, that's good. We can see some nice detail. What is going on here? What is going on? Okay, um, they were of great help and encouragement, D and K, um, DD and K. Um, at the point of having the fans completed, my husband and I decided to sell almost everything we owned. What? To live full time and travel in our RV. Oh, you're one of those fascinating, adventurous people that I've read about. Really, you're gonna do it? You're gonna live full time and travel in your RV? Incredible. Wait, no, no. Sorry. This project was the only one I packed to go into the RV. On a beautiful 4th of July weekend in an RV park, I had my husband set up a sewing station on the outdoor patio. Are you kidding me? This is where I put the quilt top together. My long-arming friend, Dawn of Los Osos Valley Quilting, did the quilting for me. Dawn from Los Osos Valley did the quilting. The quilt contains 73 different Anna Maria Horner fabrics, and it is my absolute favorite. Photo two is real life with Cinder, our black lab. So, I mean, there's much to say. First of all, the quilt is beautiful. It's really, really great. It's lovely. You did a great job. Your fan blades are wonderful and scrappy and your OCD-ness, I can't tell, <laughs> you know? 
this okay and your adventure and your life fascinating okay this black lab like this black lab is so inky black that's how i would describe it he's inky black he looks like like he's a portal to 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 space time itself i was like you know what i gotta tell you i was like oh my god it's a dog but then i was like is it like, is this like some kind of pillow? I like, he's so, he's so dark black. I just love him so much. He's, he's wonderful. Congratulations, Lynn. That's very exciting. You have a wonderful quilt and a really very cool chapter of your life that has begun. I mean, wow. Way to go. I don't know what else to say. You're, it's amazing. Yeah. Hashtag goals. I would, I would love to travel around a little bit in RV because, you know, I can't do camping. <laughs> but, the, you know, it's basically like a house on wheels, right? When you have an RV. Yeah. So, Lynn, I mean, how's it going? How do you, you're, you're welcome. I, we, we just love you so much. I mean, how, so, so are you, are you watching this like on your phone, like in your RV traveling across the country? Like it's, is it happening? Is it happening? Padma, no, I, I did think he was a pillow. I, I wasn't sure. I was like, I see a snout, but what if I call it a dog and it's some kind of like pillow backrest or something? I, I, I just was afraid. <laughs> I was afraid. Um, so yeah, I mean, are you watching the show? We live in a house in Colorado Springs now. Okay, okay. Warden Bernard says people in RVs have computers too, not just phones. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're right. I'm so sorry. I don't. But look. look you're right. I mean, that wasn't like it. That wasn't any kind of like diss or shade. I was just like thinking of like if I was in an RV, like I don't know if I could take my laptop. I'd probably try to do everything on my phone, you know. Anyway, it's fabulous, Lynn. Best of luck. Happy trails to you. Okay, Sherlock sews. I know I saw you. Hey, Stitch and Deb. How was the quilt put, put together? You know what? Um, Drink wine and so Lynn. You um, you said it was a free pattern on the Janome site, so maybe. You could throw it in the okay, good, good, good word and Bernard. But maybe you could throw it in the um, in the chat or send it. Sometimes, sometimes uh, you, if you're not a moderator, you can't put links in the chat. I think sometimes that's true. I don't know if it's true for us or not, but um, it keeps the trolls I away. I think, uh, yeah, I'm not sure for us. I'm not sure because I know I can, but yeah. I'm not a, and I'm not a moderator. But I might have a designation. I'm yeah, not sure. you do. You do. You're. Um, if you, yeah, if you can't put the link in Drink Wine and Solon, or if you don't have it, like, uh, another reason to be a subscriber is you get access to our Discord server, which is like the clubhouse that we hang out in when the show's not on, which is really fun. So you could put it in the Discord, or you could whisper, you could use your Twitch, like, whisper is like the DM in Twitch, and whisper it to Cake, and she could put it in. Anyway, but that's, but it was a Janome free pattern. Okay, Sherlock Sos, are you out there? Are you out there? Um, here's what, what Sherlock Sos says Sherlock Sos speaks five languages I just love that about her um Sherlock says I don't really do small quilts I tend to make big quilts intended to keep people warm but I got an idea inspired by the huge oak tree in our backyard um it's a tree of life block but as our tree through the but as our tree through the seasons oh I just love it um I used scraps and embroidered and hand quilted the details and this is pi picture one um and uh it hangs to the side of our mantle and has become the backdrop for so much of our life we've got the train table uh turned concert stage in front of it most of the year okay here and i'm going to go back to this uh, to show you some details oh oh my god these are your little pumpkins oh my god oh my god um and by the way by the way um Sherlock said that she, okay, so she, she said the lighting in the corner where it usually hangs isn't great. So, so she, she styled that she, she took this out of the, where it usually hangs so that she could get a good photo, photo of it. Anyway. Okay. So picture two. Okay. We've got the train table turned concert stage in front of it most of the year. Oh, okay. There it is there. Um, and she said, you know, she obscured her kids' faces because it's important to maintain their privacy, and I couldn't agree more. Um, and Sherlock says, uh, this quilt hangs next to the Christmas tree during the winter season. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see where it would go. And like the tree in our yard, this quilt has become part of what our life looks like now. I love it so much. Um, and Sherlock says, I used to think that, for, uh, that quilts for the wall were not interesting, in part because I didn't think of them as useful. 
But I find myself paging through family photos, and that tree, that tree, both the quilt and the live tree outside, sort of mark our time and travel with us. Uh, that's lovely. Yeah. Um, that, that's really lovely. I love that, how you said that. Both the quilt and the tree live outside, sort of mark our time and travel with us. Well, I mean, first of all, you're doing a very good job with these children. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the stage is excellent. Um, the Tinker Toys, whatever, are excellent. The guitar and the microphone, excellent. And the quilt is perfect. The backdrop, right? This backdrop to your life. It's wonderful, Sherlock. It's just wonderful. Thank you so much for sending this. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, there's one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. There's not a picture three prompt in here. I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I just, I, I apologize because I was... I was not looking for the Christmas tree picture. And here it is. This is great. There it is. Look at it. Look at it. It's right there. Oh. VGBC. Oh, God. Oh. Wow. Wow. Oh, my God. The tree. The tree quilt is right there. It's wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Well done. Well done, Sherlock. You know we love you. Padma, is it you? Have you come? Have you come to share? You have come to share with us. Okay. Let's see what Padma has to say. Are you ready? Um, okay. Padma says, and you have three photos too. Okay, good. Padma says, I recently bought this quilt from our, wait a minute, do I have the right one? Hang on now, hang on, hang on. I've got image three. You didn't number your photos, Padma, but it's okay. It's okay. Everyone, by the way, this time was, it was amazing. And Robin, thank you so much for wrangling all the forms. I mean, Getting numbers and names on these file names is so important. It is very, very, very important. So uh, everybody did a great job. Padma, you did a great job also, <laughs> but I don't know which order your photos are in. So can you tell me? Can you tell? I think, I think this is, I think this is, is this right? It's the first photo that you sent me. Okay, hang on, hang on. You did great. Okay, then they're in order. Great. So this is, uh, I re Padma says, I recently bought this quilt from our Jill Alexander, my quilt nerd friend and antique dealer. Jill is uh, here at the show tonight, indeed. Um, Padma says, um, Jill said they were older blocks, but finished more recently. After I bought, sorry, it's a little loud out there. Um, after I bought it and got a look at it, I said I thought it was maybe finished in the 1960s. Interesting. Jill thinks so too, but she said that there are 1800s fabrics in it. Wonderful, says Padma. I recently started collecting quilts, tops, and blocks from that period, wherever, whenever I can afford it. I've gone crazy and bought way too many quilt tops in the last couple months. I blame it on Quilt Nerd and the upcoming Finishing School Workshop with Quilt Folk. Yes, it's true. Many people are very excited about the Finishing School Workshop, which uh, is debuting in July uh, me and my mom are teaching again. It's pretty exciting through Quillfolk. So go to quillfolk.com. Okay. Um, Padma says uh, that yes, a few other nerds have said the same thing. You know who you are. Um, now I really want to know the history of these older quilts and tops. By the way, this looks beautiful where it is, Padma. Um, I want to know the history of the fabrics and everything about quilts from that period. So I'm buying books on Civil War. Uh, oh, look at this. Oh, my that's really beautiful. I'm buying books on Civil War quilts uh, and dating fabrics. I've signed up for Carolyn Gibbs's online antique quilt study classes. Pama, you are, this is happening. You're not kidding. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that stripe. It's so fabulous. Um, Word and Bird Nerd, Padma says, is, is joining her as well uh, for Carolyn Gibbs's antique quilts study classes. I'm interested in that too, gosh. We're gonna, we're gonna figure out the guest stuff and maybe we could talk to that person, that'd be interesting. And Padma says in closing, I've made a lot of friends through uh, the Quilt Nerd Show and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you to Mary and all of you who make this show happen. 
So, uh, yes. Th this is, I mean, real. So, wait a minute. So, you... Yeah, I mean, you're really... You've... This is... You're into this. This quilt, the quilting is adorable, Jill. Cranky, I love it too. Um, the quilting is so sweet. It's so, it's just the stitches are just so darling, right? It's a, it's just a cute little quilt. It's a cute quilt. And it's so cute. Yeah. And it's so, I mean, it's just simple, but so striking. Yeah, yeah. That red binding, I mean, pfft, I'm a sucker for that crimson red. It looks, it looks delightful. It's just perfect. Pondrat, you did a fine job. You've got good taste and now... We cannot be held responsible for the money that you are spending for your new fun thing of quilting. Okay? Uh, it's not our fault, but you're welcome. <laughs> um, so good job. Okay, so I am so organized tonight with this. It's like the most organized quilt nerd on parade because everybody was so awesome with their, with their uh, forms and so forth. Okay, Beverly's Butter. Beverly's Butter, who went, uh, who visited the Iowa Quilt Museum and left me a note, and I feel like I keep, I think I've mentioned it on the show, that was so amazing, that made my day, and I've got a little card going out to you, um, and I, it, just, it just made my day, even though I didn't get to see you, because I wasn't at the Iowa Quilt Museum at that time, but you left me a note, and it meant the world to me, and you have sent in this picture. Um, Beverly's Butter says, in 1976, I was 20 years old. My grandmother needed me to take her to the airport in Minneapolis, which was two hours away, so she could fly to visit my aunt in Detroit. While I drove her, she told me she had bought raffle tickets for a quilt that was made by a homemaker group in Indiana. She said if she won it, she would give it to me. Well, she won it. My aunt was super pissed she had promised it to me, but she did give it to me. <laughs> That's, uh, yes. Um, that's really funny. <laughs> like you said she was super pissed. Um, I didn't know what a precious gift it was until much later. And we've got three three pictures. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love that little bed. That like mission, is that a mission style bed, sort of? I don't know. Oh, wow. That looks so cool on that. Let me just see. Okay, great. This is great. What What is this cool cabin where you are? I mean, I want that. I want a ca cabin like that, you know, like that, oh. Well, you might be in Minnesota. Anyway, I loved garment sewing, Beverly continues, uh, and fabric at a young age, but I didn't grow up with quilts or quilt making. Since retiring, I have been able to get a little more serious about quilting, and I love the history, and I'm learning so much all the time. This bicentennial quilt has hung on the wall of three homes, wow, that I have lived in and now has a place on a bed in our spare bedroom. Although hard to make out, this picture of the individual circle block has what I assume are the names of the makers of the quilt embroiderer on it. Yeah, totally. You know, Beverly's Butter, you really are in the right place. I mean, this kind of history stuff, like we're so excited about it, right? Um, and it's interesting because you see a, a quilt like this from 1976 and, you know, this really is like, let's see, it's vintage for sure, but like we see depression era quilts and you know signature quilts and like all of those fundraising quilts from different times, you know, 19th century stuff. And I mean, this is what they look like in the 20th century, you know? The, the, the styles change, but the purpose stays the same. It's really cool. <laughs> I love it that your aunt was like, I did promise to give that to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a woman of my word. Hope you like it and you know, wouldn't she be happy to know that, yeah. Yeah, you do like it. You really like it. It's beautiful, Beverly. Well done. Just love it. Thank you so much for sharing your work or your quilt. And this would be none other than Mother Nature. Mother Nature, who is a, an OG to this show, a valued member of our community. Um, and Mother Nature says of this quilt, and I've got three, I've got three images. Another Christmas tree. I love that. Mother Nature says this. This is a Girl Scout quilt made for the 100th anniversary of the Girl Scouts. I swapped with some other Girl Scouts. Uh, several blocks in the quilts are mine because not everyone followed through. It's not very Girl scouty is it? No. Um, I also collect Girl Scout Christmas ornaments. Really? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, look at that. I love it. This is my setup every Christmas. Oh no, oh my God, to display my Girl Scout ornaments only. I do have another tree. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah, like you can all, you can have more than one Christmas tree. No one says that you can't. You can do whatever you want. Look at all these ornaments. And there's the centennial ornament. Wow. This quilt is pieced. Um, hang on, you've got a couple other pictures. Let me get to it. This quilt um, is pieced on and quilted on my domestic machine. In the white areas are motifs, which are part of Juliet Gordon Lowe's history. And that, that Juliet, uh, Juliet Gordon Lowe's was the um, founder of the Girl Scouts. Shown uh, are the pearls. Hang on. Is this right? Yeah. Shown are the pearls she sold to continue the organization in the early years. Wow, I didn't know about that. So, she, wow. So these are the pearls that she sold to keep the organization going. And then the pumpkin is a reference to her birthday, which is in Halloween. Wow. That's so great. I love it so much. I love that you have this Girl Scout homage every year. And now, and, and was it just 100 years this last year or this year? Recently and not recently. That's pretty amazing. Beautiful. I think this is, I think yeah. this is an especially cool answer yeah. too. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. it's part of this like holiday decorations yeah. and stuff. I love it. Yeah, I love that. I mean, what would I do if I made... Well, like, I mean, I'm just trying to think, like, I guess it'd be, like, sock monkeys or something. I don't know. Like, if I was, like, going to do, like, a special exhibit. Like, it's kind of an exhibit display that you've done. I really like that. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you so much, Mother Nature. You're the best. Eva, are you ready? Are you ready, Eva? Okay. This is what Eva has to say and what she has to share. I've got two images from you, Eva, so here we go. Oh, wow, what is this? Yeah, I haven't read ahead. You know, I like to discover with everybody else uh, uh, live, so let's see. Hello to all the lovely nerds. This is Eva Little, or Spitzka, on Discord. I've always wanted an all-inclusive pride flag that includes two-spirit. Includes two-spirit. Oh, yeah, okay, so what does a quilter do? Make their own, of course. So, happy pride, all. Great. This was taken roughly from a pattern for a similar flag by Modern Domestic Free Pride Flag. Modern Domestic. I used it as a guild line since that pattern did not include a guideline. I used it as a guideline since that pattern did not include what I wanted. Uh, I thought I had done math right for my addition, but I guess not. This is just a quilt top I have taped to a window to celebrate Pride Month, and maybe next year I'll change it to something else. Let me, oh yeah, great, wow, yeah, look at that. I have improved my applique in the, uh, applique in the circle, but it still needs work. I think, well, first of all, you should know, nothing, I mean, appliqueing a, a round shape or the curve on a letter, it's, it's, it takes a lot of practice. And at some point, I mean, I, I don't know. The only demo I think I would like do is probably on like appliqueing letters and, and I'm still getting better at it. But I mean, it's all about snipping, making little snips around. It, it, it's really tough. You just, you did a great job. You did a great job. That is a really hard thing to applique, especially it's thin, right? And you got two, two, you got two curves you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, there's some little tips and tricks because I do a lot of applique, yes. but applique is hard. It know, really people is. People that think it's easy. Mm -hmm. No. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm super impressed about your all your points matching. I am too. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Um, Eva says, as always, uh, I want to thank you for all your advice, words of encouragement, sharing you, your amazing work, nerds, for me to drool over and to be inspired by. Sorry for the bad photos. Does anyone know a good source to learn how to take a good quilt photo? Hey, you know... Steph, you probably have, I mean, do, do people have some go-tos? I know that the Modern Quilt Guild put out a thing a long time ago, you know, about taking, any any resources? Think of anything? Yeah, you know, I think there's some of that stuff online. Um, I want to say that the uh, Craft Industry Alliance, if anybody is a member, oh, yeah. they might have something in their library. It's not specific to quilts, but it's a kind of about 
taking pictures of craft items, mm, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like anything. But yeah, I'm terrible about taking pictures of my quilts. I just pretty much hang them outside and hope for the best. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Throw them on a wagon wheel. Just kind of hope it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eva, beautiful. Thank you so much. Happy Pride to you. Excellent. God, this is great. This is a great show. Marianne Tea Cake. Marianne, look at this montage. What? I know about this little dog. Look at those curls. Marianne is in England, and so she is asleep, but I know she'll be watching on the replay. And Marianne, uh, we go way back, and you are a delight, and you, your quilt is also a delight. So let's read what you have to say about it. Here is a quilt, Marianne Tea Cake says, very much in situ on my bed in a before and after montage. Oh, and a digging close up. Oh my God, Marianne, you're so creative and fun. I, I just love it. We're in the throes of a heat wave here in the UK, mm -hmm. pushing 90s to 100 later this week. Ugh, ugh. So even my summer duvet is too hot. This is my lightest quilt and also the first one. Also the first one I completed after moving to the UK in the 1980s and the first machine, uh, first quilt I machine quilted on my domestic machine. It's made from leftover curtain fabric and is, a, is an eight pointed star with Y seams. Wow, 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 incredible. I still love this early effort, but someone, Friso, F-R-I-S-O, Friso, um, Friso, I think it's Friso, seems to think it needs to be rearranged to better suit his needs. Hmm. Yes, yes, I see that. Oh, he's so cute. Um, after rummaging around for a bit and trying to dig it up or bury it, he usually gets into his own bed, which sits on the corner of my bed, and he snores the night away. Dogs and quilts are two, hang on, there's another picture. Dogs and quilts oh, are two of my favorite things, but I could do without the digging and the snoring. You love it, Marianne, you love it so much. You love it so much, look at this. He's so camera shy. He's like, no, 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 not my picture, no, no, no. He looks like a little lamb. He does you look like a You little. can't see his little doggy head. He looks like a little lamb. He does <laughs> bundled like up. a little lamb. We call my mom's dog Scrabble Lammykins, Lammykins. And and sometimes like like those those dogs that are like that, I guess like poodles or poodle mixes, like they're so long, like, like and they have these long legs. And so like, I would just like pull Scrabble and be like, mm, you're so long and they're so, <laughs> Yeah, anyway, it was really great. Um, Marianne, you are the best. And you and I both love dogs very much. And it's wonderful. And you, and this is a beautiful quilt, by the way. And I hope that you stay cool. It's not fun over there in Europe when it's hot, because, yeah, can't escape. Um, lovely, lovely, wow. Oh my God. We're almost, we're almost, it's, this is, we're at the last three of these. Incredible, incredible. It's eight, eight, ten after eight. Incredible. Okay, so, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Where's, hold on. There he is in there. Hold on, hold on. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's be back. Oh yeah, no, okay, I know why. Oh, here, I have another screen. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, here we have Mod Art Quilt. Uh, I mean, I know my house looks like this. <laughs> this looks like a, a, a photograph in a catalog. Um, but you know, you know what I have to say. Like, I, I am extremely impressed with Mod Art Quilt's work. But I, I mean, I, I'm kind of, I kind of fangirl out whenever I see any of it um, because that's that's the way it is, and I think it's remarkable and fabulous. Um, I, I, I have a lot of respect for you, and I love your work, and I hope that doesn't make you uncomfortable. And I hope nobody feels like, you know chopped liver. Clearly, I love these Quilt Nerd on Parade shows, and I'm just so impressed by everybody. And then, you know, I mean, Mod Art Quilt, this is insane. This is really beautiful, and I'm going to read what you have to say. Um, Art Quilt, uh, Mod Art Quilt says, um, this is an art quilt, I think this is, this is, I'm reading this right, called Saturday at the Train Museum. Okay, Saturday at the Train Museum. I love to go to the train museum in Union, Illinois, the IRM Illinois Railway Museum, especially to walk about the huge, dirt, dirty, stinky steam trains. <laughs> we have this in common. Every camp trip while growing up, no matter where we were, there was a train museum. I have three pictures from you, so I want to 
I'm going to get to, okay, great. Wow, that's, that's great. I love that uh, sort of from the side, that long shot. Um, this art quilt is composed of upcycled velvet, linen, denim, and upholstery fabrics, hand quilted with thick yarns, and it hangs in my living room, which is this photo here with the lamp. Um, Mod Art Quilt says that she hopes we get the feel of the steam of a steam train in this piece. Let's take another look at this. Oh yeah, this great close up. We'll take a look at the the full pick here in just a second. You know, this it's very it's wonderful. I mean, yes, yes to all of the things that you did here. Um, really fantastic. Hey, oh the other Mary Kate, the other Mary Kate, honey. It is so great to see you. Um, what do I even what do I even do? Oh my god. Oh, I miss you. I'm so glad to see you. It's great to see you. Okay, sorry. Uh, friends, you know? We've got friends. Okay, so this uh, this is very interesting. Mod Art Quilt, do you do you have hey Quaqua, do you have a measurement for us on this? I mean we can kind of tell well, it's it's not small. What do you say, Cake? What you we got you wanted to I just want to know, Mod Art Quilt, do you have, like, hands made of titanium? Yeah. Because I want to know how you stitched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, how big was the turkey baster of a needle yeah. that you got through? Denim with yarn. I love it. That's amazing. You yeah. know what? And I'm wondering, we, we looked at a quilt at some point that I remember was quilted with yarn. And now I'm wondering, was it another Quilt Nerds on a Parade? Did Mod Art Quilter do another one like that's quilted with yarn. I'm is, trying to remember. Is that is, it, is, is that, that ringing a bell for anybody? My dark quilter, you're here, aren't you? Yeah, I, I think I saw her. I, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, she's yeah. Forty-seven by forty-five. <coughs> forty-seven by forty-five. Wow. Okay, let's go to this one. Yeah, I mean, it's really how and how long are the stitches? Hey, Kate. <coughs> Pardon me. I mean, how, what do you, I mean, they're all so uniform, you probably know. This, this, this binding, this moment here, it's a quilt church. I, you know, I'm so glad you're hanging around, Mod Art Quilt. It's, it's great, it's great because, you know, people do different styles of stuff and that's the best thing, you know? People come from different backgrounds, they got different family origin stories, they got all this, you know, it's the best thing for any community, you know, to have like all these different styles and histories and points of view and we don't agree on everything. It's fantastic. You know, that's how, that's how a community really gets stronger, you know, because people, people share ideas from different places, right? It's the best. So, uh, Mart Art Quilt, um, says to Sherlock, yes, the green milk, the green mill, Talking about the green mill. Okay, a big yarn needle. Mon, Mon says I use a big yarn needle and sharpen the needle. Yeah, oh yeah. That's imagine that. That's a good idea. <laughs> sharpen your needle or get a new needle, you know? Quilting politic. I like the couch too. I do too. It's wonderful. Um, hey my great cats. It's just fantastic. Yeah, Finn McCool, you got it. You see it. It's like it takes all kinds, you know. If you really wanna really wanna have a community, you gotta have a lot of diversity and i mean that in the broadest sense in all of the senses that i mean it okay uh mod you're incredible you're amazing and it, listen listen it's something that um is kind of like not always um approved of in like live streams and stuff because it can get out of hand um if anybody has an you know an instagram you know or like a website or like like you can throw that into the chat. I mean, we have the we have a very cool, like tight kind of group here. We don't get a lot of trolls like putting in like gross links. Twitch is really good about that. We don't have like gross links to like Russian porn sites. Let's just call it what it is, okay? That happens in live streams, but it doesn't happen here. So, you know, if you've got a website or like something, you know, you can like, you know, be respectful of everybody, but you know, go ahead and do that if you, uh, if you want to. Um, Crosley, are you ready for this? We got two left. There's two left, and both of them just have one picture. I hope I'm not wrong about that. Crosley. Crosley, <clears throat> you are, you, you know what? You, you, you're a mystery. You're a mystery wrapped in an enigma. And I love it. I have one photo from you, and I have one sentence. <laughs> That's great. 
This is okay. First of all, aqua and brown. There's a, I have a theory. Brown is tough. Brown does not get a lot of action because because you don't brown like not everybody reaches for it. But I made a quilt one time with shades of brown and shades of red, like red, like you know the red that crimson and you know tomato red and like red and brown, awesome. And aqua and brown, aqua and brown is good. Crosley knows. I went through I went through an aqua and brown phase. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. Aqua and brown play together really nice. Pink and brown also work. Nice oh yes. Together. Pink and brown. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's right. Pink and brown. Yes. Um, Crosley says, "I made this a few years ago, and have been using it." <laughs> you know. That's the best thing that a quilt can, that's the best thing you could say about a quilt. I made this a few years ago and have been using it. I mean, that means that you like it enough that you made it a few years ago and you're still using it. <laughs> it's the best. It's wonderful, it's fantastic. I love the batiks that you've like worked in here. It's just great and you've got the shams. That was really, you know, people used to do that a lot more, like a lot of pillow shams matching the quilts. What, okay. I'm going to do a poll. I just have to. I, it's, it was really fun to do the poll last time. I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask if anybody's ever made pillow shams to match their quilt. Why not? I want to know. I bought a quilt that Georgia Bone Steel had made, and there were pillow shams that came with it. Oh, so your, your cotton bowl quilt? Is yep. that the one you're talking about? Exactly. Oh, I know. fascinating. Yep. Have I, I have a vague memory of what the quilt looks like. Yep. Love to see, love to see those pillow shams. Listen, I'll bring them in. I'll bring them in. Come to Chicago. Yeah, please come to Chicago. Um, <clears throat> have you ever made a quilt with matching shams? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to put yes, no. Uh, no, but I'd like to. But no, but I'm into it. I'm into, I'm, I'm into the idea. There you go. Here we go. You got five minutes. I'm going to start the poll. If you're watching in Facebook or YouTube land, you got to come to Twitch, man. That's where you vote in the poll. It's a good time. So uh, the poll is up for five minutes, and you can vote, and you can uh, say whether you've, oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, the kitten. We see the, the sewing kitten. Finn McCool's mom. Oh my gosh, Finn McCool is gifting six tier one. Finn McCool is gifting six tier one subscriptions to people who are watching the show tonight who aren't subscribed yet to the channel. a litter of sewing kittens. And Finn knows now that when you give a gift subscription to somebody, you get the little sewing cat that pops up, who pops up. And Finn McCool is awesome. And she also is like, well, she's generous, clearly. We know that about her. And 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 also she knows she knows the strategy that the more gift subscriptions you give out, the longer you get to see the sewing kitten. It makes my heart happy whenever we get to see that. Finn McCool's mom, thank you so much. That's amazing. So people, if you if you got one of those gift subscriptions, <laughs> um, that means that you're entered into the giveaway for June, which we'll do in like a week or so. Um you get to use all the emotes and like the emotes. Where's the poll? The poll is pinned to the top of, wait a minute, is that true? Yeah. Yeah. If it's, you're on a phone or a tablet, you may have to do some poking around in the chat area. It's usually like at the top, but I think if you're on a smaller right. device, it's it's hard to see, you kind of have to poke around. Yeah, yeah, poke around and yeah, the, the different devices are, yeah, it's kind of annoying, but there it should be at the top of the chat or somewhere in the chat, so just kind of. Click around, um, but but Finn, thank you so much. Uh, and and we have these fun little. Um, the poll did not post. Whoa whoa whoa! Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not good. That's user error. Um, uh, hold yeah, on. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah, I'm wondering it because it's. Yeah, people it says voted. current poll. Yeah, and I have the option to end the poll, so that means it's live. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Do you see I it, know, Robin? If you have. Yeah. I have a, a bunch of stuff that I had to close up at the top of my chat. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess pins, it might things, take a while for some, some sure, people. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Okay, okay. It seems it's active, so give it a second. But but the, the gift subscriptions are wonderful, and we have like emotes, which are like special emojis for this show. And when you are a uh, a subscriber, 
you get to th use things like the welcome basket, which is like to welcome new people in the chat. And you also get to use, uh, I mean, depends on the tiers. I just use the, it's a crack up emoji, which is my sister, Rebecca. That's that's something that she says. And we, we say it now all the time. What a, This is a crack up. Like this show's a crack up. I don't know. And then, I mean, if you're really, you got wine, you can do wine. I mean, there's just, yeah. So thank you. Then it's wonderful. Hopefully, people who um, like the show will resubscribe after their subscription is up. And thank you, Crosley. <clears throat> we love your aqua and brown quilt, and it inspired a poll. And we'll see how many people out there watching tonight um, in the Twitch have made a pillow sham or not, or if they want to. This is great. You really did a nice job. One more view. Lovely bedroom. Oh, look at all this art. Okay. Um, our last quilt nerd on parade. Uh, comes from a nun maker. A nun maker has, yes, yes, Steph? I think there might be one more. Oh, 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 no. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, I hey. have it in, this, in Slack if you don't have it on oh. your. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Robin had concern oh. that there, there might be one that got missed, so. Oh, I have oh. it in the, in the Slack if you need it. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I, oh, because, okay. Yes, I have them. I have them. I'm so okay. sorry. I've got, I've got, um, uh, hang on. I've got that. Hang on. Mod art quilt. Wait a minute. Dee Dee? Yeah, there was, yeah, the Dee Dee's. Dee Dee's is the one that we were concerned got about. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. So I'm not you sure. You have forgotten Dee Dee. We have no, now I, I see what happened. I see what, so Dee Dee, we've got you. And, uh, yes, yes. Okay. And mod art quilt. Okay, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of organizing and, and so forth. So so here we go. So we got one more, Dee Dee. You are not. You all is not lost. So we'll we'll do you next uh, for the grand finale. But um, a nun maker says this about the quilt. There's just one picture. Um, I love this pillow. I love the quilt. What do you have to say about it? And you say, hey, it's Amy in Pensacola. This is my oh my stars quilt from Thought and Found blog thoughtandfound.wordpress.com. Uh, this quilt is a study in yellow. Hang on, let me go over here. Study in yellow. Um, I read that yellow was hard to work with. Oh, and quilters shy away from it. So I jumped in head first. That's what I do. I invented posters. I quickly realized that I needed a neutral background color or the stars would disappear. Uh, so gray became my background. Oh, interesting. I worked on the stars on and off for a couple of years and had about half completed it when COVID hit. The lockdown started and I had very little to do at work and took pretty much all of April 2020 off. I decided it was time to finish this quilt, so I worked on it daily to get it finished. There were 15 variations on the star and I did about 13 of them. Wow. Each had a 12 inch, eight inch and four inch block which I pieced until I had enough to complete the quilt. I felt like at le it felt like at least a million four inch stars. Oh yeah. Uh, and and then maker says it's a favorite and it currently lives on my bed. You know what? This is great. Lo oh, it's really, how big is it? It's, bi it's big. You made a lot of stars and you know what? Oh, look at this. Look at you with the, with the, 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 wow. That's, I mean, that's, that's not easy, you know? unless they have some really fancy trick to, to do it. You've got, you've got one of my favorite things, which is a whole like smorgasbord of the same color, right? Lots of different yellows playing together. It really, especially with a star block, if you have this scrappy monochrome, you know, you know what I'm saying, all of, of one shade or of one color, when you have all of those different shades playing together, it really sparkles. Like with a star block, it really has a movement. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And this is a very nice accent. Well done. You use your time wisely. Yeah. I think I just realized that she's got the same brass bed I do, except <gasps> I didn't recognize it because I never polished mine. Really? That's funny. Mine is an, an ugly, dull brass color. <laughs> that was very shiny and pretty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it is very nice. It is very nice. So uh, actually, I want a, yeah, I've always wanted sort of a bed like that, kind of the mission style, but, but in brass it's great and you've got oh hey this is a double in situ i spy another quilt on the wall hmm. an unmaker double trouble okay um it's really really great 
Well done. We love that you're here. Thank you for coming to the show and being part of the show. Okay, Dee Dee, I have, I have not, I have you, you, you're gonna close out this, this, the, the whole section. I mean, this is like, the, it was worth the wait. That's for sure. Sorry to give you a scare. I had it in the wrong place. So we are going to open this. Great. Okay. So actually, let's see, image one. Okay. I've got image zero, image one, and image two. Okay, so this should be this should be just right. Okay, Dee Dee. Here's what Dee Dee has to say. Dee Dee says, "I Dee Dee Brewington, <laughs> you do that every time. I'm not making that up, right? You do it every time. I think so. I Dee Dee Brewington made this quilt from the Omega pattern by Devon from Miss Make. I chose the scrappy version using a combination of ruby star fabrics." Omega, uh, and this is the, a quote from the, the pattern, I think. Omega is a wavy, improv-inspired checkerboard pattern achieved with strip piecing, a streamlined set of templates, and a few clever cutting tweaks for maximum variation. Omega's curves are gentle, and her wonky nature forgives some imprecision." Unquote. The quilting was done by my talented friend, Don McKnight from Los Osos Quilting Company. I chose the Curious Cat pattern. Oh, look at that. With gold metallic thread. Just look at those cat faces. Little scamps. Oh, they are little scamps. They are little scamps. Let's see. Where, where is my little scamp? And there was no monkey business about it either. That's right. Um, they are little scamps. My husband and cat, Smokey, are always up for a quilt photo shoot. I'm so grateful. Oh, what? Look at these beauties. That's your husband and your cat? <laughs> Smokey? His name's Smokey. Oh, God. What if, what if your husband's name was Smokey? <laughs> Look, it's Smokey and my cat. <laughs> um, it's a handsome man and a handsome cat. Uh, and this is so California. Oh, Dee Dee. Dee Dee. I gotta come visit you and Kay. I still okay, money. I've got to just oh god, Mary Fonz. Cause she got they got they found a quilt top and we used it on the show. And I owe them $35. I mean, it's $35, right? Good God. I'm hang on. I'm getting plus shipping. Oh. I just keep forgetting to do it. And then every time I do the show and you guys are here, I'm like, oh God, look at this. Okay, for heaven's sakes. They're such nice ladies. Yeah, I know. They would not they would not play the we know where to find yeah. card. Well, that's the problem is that they're nice enough, but then I'm just like, oh god. I owe them $40. So look, 40 K D D and then I'm going to make a, a face that looks like this. That's me going like pay pay pay. Why didn't you remind me, Steph? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, this is uh, this is great. I, I really so this is the top. This is before it was quilted. That's a really neat quilt. I really like that. I really really do. Oh, you can see you can see Smokey's the top of Smokey's head. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, that's uh, that's really. It's, I'm glad he's tall enough to hold it up because it's you know the 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 full thing is really cool. Ruby Star, huh? It's great. It's really great. Hey, babe. Babe. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Okay, please. Um, so Eva says, it seems like that yard. Wait, hold on. Hold on. What are you saying? What are you saying? Uh, it seems like the backyard is a perfect place to have an early morning tea and watch the world. Drew, I see you. Uh, yeah, that does seem like a very, very good place to do that. I love it. I just love it. It's wonderful. Well done. Smokey's got places to go. Smokey's like, I got, I got, I got things to do. Okay. Um, so it's eight thirty. What do you say, Kate? How do you, how do you feel? Do you want to? I mean, I can read this little letter. By the way, congratulations to everyone. You're all very, very talented. Um, we could take a break. I don't need a break. 
Do you want to, do you have, do you have any, I mean, any reportage? I don't have any, like, extremely new Dutton material. Okay. I was going to say I did make a discovery. Please. Um, I, I, so, I, I mean, yeah. I really just kind of research sort of tidbits yeah. for those of you that are new researchers or thinking about it. Yeah. Um, cool. Is to not, to not think you have everything. <laughs> and yeah. To not think you've located everything. And when there are gaps in your research, go back and look again because yeah. inevitably you find things. Yeah. And, I found, I knew that, so there's, of course, multiple institutions in Baltimore that Dunton sent stuff to, and there's a little confusion with some of his uh, letters where he talks about he's going to send stuff to Enoch Pratt Free Library, Mm. which is a big, you know, it's a library system in Maryland, Mm -hmm. and he did not do that. He actually sent them to the Baltimore Museum of Art. Hmm. He also sent things to Shepherd Pratt, the hospital that he worked at. Mm-hmm. And I have discovered he sent a single scrapbook to the uh, Maryland, well, at the time it would have been the Maryland Historical Society, but it is now in the Maryland Center for History and Culture, which is the Maryland Historical Society's museum. Interesting. It's a very good museum. Mm. Yeah, if you ever travel through the Mid-Atlantic, if you're ever around Baltimore, I highly recommend that museum. Good to it know. Is, I mean... It is all things Maryland. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. You know, you're, it, but they're like their permanent collections, really cool history stuff, and they have a lot of cool stuff about you know diversity and like the civil rights movement in Baltimore, yeah, yeah. all kinds of cool things. So. Cool. Yeah, those historical anyway, societies. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go yes, ahead. they really are, and they they are they're more progressive, I think, than a, some historical societies are a little stuffy. Sure. But um, they, I discovered they had this scrapbook. I've actually seen the scrapbook. I saw two pages of it because it was they had it in their show. But I had assumed that they borrowed it from the Baltimore Museum of Art, mm-hmm. and I just hadn't gotten to it yet. And then I discovered, well, shoot, they have it at their site. So it's another place to look, and it, I think it's going to fill in some gaps for my research. So. Yeah, right? Like, like keep looking, yeah. right? Keep keep digging for this stuff. It's mm-hmm. fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. And the other thing I was yeah. going to cake break talk yeah. about was really I just to throw that question out there because I know some of you do not live in the United States. And yeah. uh, I got a little, you know how sometimes you get like a, a postcard from a friend yeah. or just some unexpected thing in the mail and you're like, yay, it's happy mail. Well, I got some mail today that was not happy mail. Oh, no. It had, it said jury duty. Oh, really? <laughs> Oh, and man. it got me to thinking, and I'm like, do, does everybody deal with this? Like, I, because I know that like the legal systems, the court systems in other countries, I mean, even in like Canada and and, and Great Britain, are really kind of different. Yeah. Than what we deal with here, and so yeah. kind of like, do you guys have to deal with this? Like, is this like the bane of your existence? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Because I mean, frankly, Mary, yeah. it's you and I are a lot of like in terms of our work schedules. Like, we have like some flexibility. True. We're, like the perfect true. juror. Yeah, it's you true. Know? It's true. You know, you have you freelance. You you're yeah. college educated. Yeah, you that's have, right. Like, there's a lot of things about you. We that believe in justice. Crime. You know. Yes, you're the kind of people that lawyers go. Ha, ha, yes. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We don't have like really hardcore like beliefs in either on either polarity you know we're just like well i don't know about you but like i'm i'm an independent voter you know i'm a moderate like i'm just like please just yeah. god so yeah like i'm the perfect the <laughs> what's that what's that throw it in the garbage <laughs> cranky well the thing is i'm not looking for a bench warrant yeah not mess around in maryland <laughs> what if like we come the show we the show comes on and i'm like okay i need to listen this is a serious topic everybody stephanie oh cakes God. in jail she's in jail she's in jail <laughs> nobody freak out cakes in jail. yeah yeah exactly she's going to be fine she's going to be fine we need to raise eight hundred dollars for her bail let's i started to go fund me yeah <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. jill was in a jury selection during whitey bulger oh lord oh um that's... i actually have served on a federal jury before really it was 20 years ago though mm. yes Hmm. And it was one thing that got me out of local jury duty many years ago because really? it was district court. Yeah, it was federal district district court, and I did my week there. I unfortunately, got picked for a trial because again, I'm I'm a milk toast kind of person. They're yeah, exactly the kind of person that I have, yeah. there's nothing controversial about me. Um, so then, yeah, I got called then for local the county jury duty within a few years, and they were like, "Oh, you can get out of it because you did the federal jury duty." But it's been so long ago now; they want me again. <laughs> well, oh, and here's the best part, yeah. guys. It used to be called jury duty, right? Yeah. In Maryland, 
Ireland, they changed it to jury service. Oh, isn't that, you know, the English language. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. Well, you know, thank you for your duty. <laughs> And and yeah, just let it keep us keep us updated. You know, if if yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I get that thirty dollars a day that they pay now, really, I, they used to only pay fifteen the first time I did jury duty. It's thirty dollars a day. Hey man, it works out to minimum wage. I think. Does it? Re oh ma wow. I, think, I haven't done the math. Let's do but, a yeah. court case on that. Oh god, what a mess. So anyway, yeah, I will be able to spend that thirty dollars a day I was not expecting to spend on done research. Yes, yet. exactly. Yeah, just. But I haven't been. I haven't been selected yet, so. Okay. Cross your fingers, guys. Knock on wood for me. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I'd Please. rather be researching than jury duty in. Ooh. 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 Merch. I'd rather be quilt researching. Bumper sticker. Right? Yeah. I'd rather be researching quilts. Right? I'd rather be. Yeah. And then there's like, yeah, okay. There's a, that's great. I love a bumper sticker. I'd put it on my computer because I don't have a car, but like. I'd rather be researching quilts. That's a pretty good bumper sticker. Yeah? What do you think? I think this is I good. It's a pretty good t-shirt. I would definitely walk around with a t-shirt. You like know that. what? That is, yeah, I'd rather be, okay, I'm writing it down. I'd rather, rather be researching quilts. Hashtag quilt nerd. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather be researching quilts. Also pay K and DD. Okay, I'd rather be researching quilts. That's awesome. I love it so much. Hashtag quilt nerd. It's happening. Okay, great. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Just in a, for a few minutes. By the way, the poll is done. The poll is closed. Have you ever made a quilt with matching shams? Thirty-six percent of the people said no. Nineteen percent of the people said yes. Interesting. That's twenty percent of people have done that. But forty-four percent of people said no. I've never made a quilt with matching shams, but I'm into the idea. Interesting. Okay. So, so, so I've been doing this research. I'm writing a thing. It's, it's very serious. My draft is due on Saturday. And if, uh, if all goes well, it'll be, that draft will be polished up by somebody who knows what they're doing. And, uh, and I'll, I'm going to submit it to a thing. I'm going to submit it to a thing on July 1st. And that is exciting. And it's very, very, it's, I eat, sleep, and breathe this piece of writing. Um, for the past two weeks, I've been working on almost nothing but that, except for photography today for cool folks. So, uh, in the course of my working on this thing, I came across a very interesting uh, thesis. So I I have a um, a membership where I pay for a subscription to JSTOR, which you know, you know, I pay I pay for a thing because I use a thing, right? It's like this show. You know, if you watch the show, it's like. Oh, pay for that thing I, I really like that thing I want it to keep going so I pay for JSTOR which is like a repository for college papers and journals papers and things like that and it's great it's not cheap but it's great and I found a thesis from 2011 by Karen E. Smith on JSTOR a thesis submitted in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in American Studies in the Graduate College of the University of Iowa which is my alma mater, actually. Karen E. Smith's uh, thesis was this. Framing quilts slash framing culture, women's work, and the politics of display. Okay? It's, it doesn't look like much, but hang on. But it's really great. Okay? And in this thesis, I found a very interesting portion about this scandal, this kind of like dust up, this uh, something, something really kind of happened in the early 90s in the quilt media. And it mostly took place in American Quilter Magazine. And American Quilter Magazine was, was a publication of AQS, American Quilter Society. And it, look at it, it says, dedicated to promoting the accomplishments of the quilter, okay? And this issue is from Spring. This is Spring 1991, Volume 7, Number 1. Okay. So Karen E. Smith talks about this dialogue that began in, like, 1991 and then got into 1992. And, and let me just, like, summarize it for you. There was discussion about what 
like basically like what traditional quilts are and what non-traditional quilts are and like what the art quilt is and I've been the thing that I'm writing is about this okay it's about quilts in the fine art system okay and like I just say this when the art quilt was a was a term when that became a term it was it, it did a lot of things it did a lot of things it made some people feel empowered because they were making quilts for the wall and not the bed and so they were making these like art objects but they were still quilts and eh, maybe right you know? and so they were but then but then and other people have written about this including like one of my heroes susan burnick she you know it's like it's splintered it's splintered what susan burnick called a once unified tradition a once unified group of quilt makers were suddenly splintered because suddenly you had the question that was asked is well if if those are art quilts what's everything else if those quilts are art that they're making wh what are my quilts you know because i don't whatever so this this sort of schism that formed in the in the quilt tradition is fascinating it's really fascinating and one of the things that i'm looking at and then i'll read you this thing but one of the things i'm looking at I, i've been looking at the statistics okay <laughs> and like the question is, you know, does the fine art world, have they accepted quilts as art, you know? And there are things to parse about that, like, well, do they accept utilitarian quilts as art? Do they accept art quilts as art? And I got to tell you something. I'm going to give you a little, a little um, sneak peek. I looked at some data. I just, like, looked, I just did some comparative data. And what I found was not good. The... Whitney Exhibit of Art, the Whitney Museum of Art that did the abstract design and American Quilt Show in 1971, there were 60 quilts in that show. And the next time that the Whitney did a quilt exhibit was the G's Ben Show in 2002. That is 51 years between the Whitney Show and the G's Ben Show. 50, half a century, okay? So I looked at the other major quilt exhibits that have happened since the Whitney Show, basically. There was one at the MFA Boston, Quilts in Color by Gerald Roy. There was that one. And, and different museums, many museums have had quilt shows, but I'm talking about the Met, which I would love for somebody to tell me I'm wrong. As far as I can see, the Metropolitan Museum of Art has never, ever, ever done a quilt dedicated exhibit, ever. <clears throat> um, the Getty has never done it, and they have decorative art, okay? And then, of course, there's the whole issue of putting quilts in, dec in the decorative art wing, whatever. But here's the other thing I found. There were 60 works in the Whitney exhibit. There were 60 works in the G's Ben exhibit. In Quilts and Color at the MFA, there were 58. In Fabric of a Nation, there were not quite 60. In um, Bisa Butler's show, there were 22. So even though a couple of these quilt shows, these quilt exhibits that have happened in like major museums have, have no, nothing has surpassed 60 works. So they're shrinking. So when you look at like how, how often quilt exhibits happen in major museums, it is, 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 not, is not encouraging. And I'm not trying to bum you out. I'm trying to say, look, I have been looking at this data. And in terms of like, are quilts art? Have they been, been accepted by the art system? The numbers do not help this case. Like we have much to do, you know? So, so, and the other thing is I looked at, I looked at the number of quilts and of course this may not be all of the quilts that the Metropolitan Museum has. Like I look, if you go to the Met website and you search for quilts, I forget exactly how many they have, but I did the math and they have 1.5 million works, uh, objects in their collection, the Metropolitan Museum. And I, I, I calculated how many of those objects are quilts, and it is 0.002% of their collection. So, oh yeah, <laughs> Wonky's like, I feel a stern letter coming on. Well, I mean, this, what I'm, what I'm working on, this piece of writing is, is uh, you know, if, it'll, it would be a stern letter, I suppose, um, in its essence. So, but it's very interesting. So I'm looking at this, reading this thesis about this dust up, and I had heard, I had heard before, I'd read about this speech that Michael James, the Michael, Michael James, the art quilter, I read about this thing. He gave the keynote address at, at, at an AQS event 
in like, yeah, like 1991 or something. Maybe 1992. The, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, hang on, I wanna make sure I got the right thing. So, yeah, in, oh yeah, it's in this one. In 1992, 1992, Michael James gave this keynote address, okay? It's in, it's in this issue. I had to order all of these. I mean, I, I know I could have asked the New England Quilt Museum to run copies, but I had to, I had to get it quicker, very quickly. Anyway, so, so he wrote this, um, this uh, editorial. He, they printed his speech in American Quilter magazine, and it made a lot of people very angry because he said things like this. And what's so funny, I got this issue used, and look at what is going on here. Look, someone who owned this before highlighted. You can't, the green screen messes it up. But had high, look at stuff, look. They had highlighted. Here's a couple things Michael James said. I've been teaching long enough to know. Now, and I'm saying this without judgment, okay? Whoa. I'm saying this without judgment because I'm just trying to get the information here. But this made a lot of people very angry, and it's quite long. But uh, he, he says, I've been teaching long enough to know that while art cannot be taught, the conditions that give rise to, the com to competent artistry can be nurtured and refined. I believe that one can be trained to see creatively and that one can learn to draw and how to compose and design and that learned material can be applied to one's personal quest for expression and for self-realization. Talent, where it exists, is certainly helpful, but talent is a function, at least to some degree, of perseverance and hard work and passion. I also believe, and I believe this deeply, that without some amount of formal training, most would-be artists or designers face very limited prospects for development. Like the, like the initiate to any spoken language, they may well be able to say bonjour, comme ça, konnichiwa, or danke schön, but carrying on a conversation is another matter altogether. Whew! Like, oh, like, damn! He's like, you, he, he, I mean, what he's saying is that if you're not formally trained, if you didn't go to school, to school, to study art, you are not an artist. Like, okay. uh, right? I'm sorry, but I got that. I please <laughs> preach. Let me plug in this phone so you don't die. Oh, it's, he's comparing art to the making of expressing creativity and expressing ideas through creativity. <laughs> He's making a comparison to um, speaking a foreign language. Yes. And yeah. I think that art and making creative things and those expressions yeah. should be compared to your native language because we are all born creative people. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I know lots of people that are native English speakers who don't speak real good English. Yeah. <laughs> so... In yeah. the same way, people yeah. that don't know how to soak themselves in creativity and, and don't know the way the ways of the world when it comes to art. Right. Maybe seen as people who are not artists. But right. you can soak up all of that quote unquote formal training. I mean, even even before the internet. Right. Somebody who's untrained and right. in design could still soak it up somewhere. Yeah. And so I think that's 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 a, that's just more of that like you know high and mighty keeping people out of the art world rhetoric. I mean, like you must have you must be trained. I mean, just because you can say bonjour doesn't mean that you speak French. Yeah, I can say hello doesn't mean I speak English that well either. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So so here's something that's been making my brain like I mean oh my god I'm so like I got smoke coming out of my ears like thinking about all this stuff because here's the thing so I've been looking at like you know, the, the Western, so the, the rise of the idea of fine art. Like it's 250 years old. It, it, was, it came from like the moneyed, you know, we've talked about this, you know, it's the elite, you know, Western world who kind of developed this idea of like the artist is this like inspired sort of genius, you know, who's like not even skilled, just sort of like inspired by the muses. And, and, and you know, it's a very, this, this idea that painting and sculpture and architecture and poetry and, you know, dance in some way, to some extent, uh, and music are the fine arts and everything else is craft. This whole art craft distinction is very new. It's relatively new. For 2,000 years, art and craft were not different. The opposite of art was nature. It was nature. Anything that man made with skill and some degree of you know facility was art 
shoe, you know, sh ship craft, okay? It was an art. There wasn't an art and artisan distinction. It was, you, you were an artist, artisan. You, were, you, you made things, you, were, you made shoes, you made ships, you, 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 horse breaking, government, the art of government, the art of cooking, the art of beer. We still use these, these terms. It used to be that anything that was made that did not come from nature was art, ars techna, it's Greek, whatever. But then in the 18th century, you start getting this definition of fine art, right? And it has a lot to do with the rise of industrialization and all that, okay? But, he, but, but by the current, this is blowing me away, by the current definition, by the definition of art that we all kind of know, and this has to do with like Immanuel Kant, I mean, I'm going deep on this stuff, okay? An art object as we sort of understand it these days, after the 18th century, an art object is something that is made for the purpose of judging aesthetically. In other words, it does not have a use. <laughs> you can't wipe yourself with it. You can't cuddle up with it. It's not for the body, it's for the mind. If you make a painting, you can't do anything with that. You think about it, you put it up on the wall. It is art for art's sake. It is, it is made for contemplation, aesthetic judgment, aesthetic it is made for the purposes a purpose of aesthetic. It's, it's for your head, right? And you look at it and you consider it and you think about it, mm, and it's very elite. It is because a lot of people don't have time to like sit around and like, you know, go to a museum and pay the thing and like look and just consider art and you know what it means, okay? And art is beautiful and I love it and it's great, okay? The art as we know it in, in the 2023, okay? Used to be art was everything. Now it's very specific things, painting and sculpture, whatever. Okay, so here's what I'm, been thinking about and wrestling with. If an art object, as we understand it now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, okay? If an art object is an object made purely for the purpose of aesthetic consideration, if it does not have a utilitarian use, that is what we call art. Okay, it doesn't have a use. So this idea of the art quilt if you make an object that is for the wall and not to be used for the bed, it's not a quilt. <laughs> you, may, you, you may make art using techniques and materials that are used in, in making, in quilt making. You can quilt it, you can use fabric and, and thread and do all kinds of wonderful things using techniques that are used in quilt making. But if that is not meant to be used by a person on their body and it's made for the wall, which is how an art quilt is defined, is a quilt made for the wall, not the bed. I think that we can like settle this because by the definition of what art is, that's a piece of art, period. It is not, it does not matter. It is a piece of art. It is a piece of textile art. I don't care. It's an, it's an artwork. And if that is true, then if you make a quilt that is meant for a person and you, you sit on it, you wrap up in it, whatever, it's, it's used by your body in some way. The definition of art as it is now, again, I'm not saying it's good. I don't whatever. A utilitarian object is made to be used. It is not made purely for aesthetic pleasure. It is different. They're separating things. They're separating things, decorative art, applied art, stuff you use. A utilitarian object cannot be art because an art object is made only for aesthetic consideration. So what I am proposing is, is I mean, after all of that, you have to hear, Quilts are not art by the definition that we have. And here's the, and he, the reason I say quilts are not art and art quilts aren't quilts. And this fight that we have had for so long, the reason that it's broken apart a lot of stuff and, and it's not working because I told you that the museums don't care about quilts. They don't. Nancy Crow has things at the Renwick. She has, she's in the permit collection of the Smithsonian, but she's not at the Met and she's not at the Whitney and she's not at the Getty and she's, she's not. And neither is Michael James. There's this division and they don't like it and they don't want it. And so the idea that we keep saying like, you're excluding us, you're not letting us in. 
we want to be in there. It's like, why do we want to be in there? Like, they don't think that we're art. If they did, if they thought regular utilitarian quilts, like the Amish quilts that were, were uh, uh, exhibited at the Whitney, if they really thought that they were art, those utilitarian quilts would be represented in the permanent collections. They would be hung in the galleries of the main, the main wings of the museum, not shunted off into an exhibit that lasts for six weeks, not put in the decorative art wing. If people actually thought the utilitarian quilts were art, real art, they'd be there, but they're not. And so what I've been contending with and what I've been thinking about and really wrestling with is this idea that utilitarian objects such as quilts will never be considered art under the current system. And if we want them to be, we have to blow it up. We have to like blow it all up. And, and there's, there's, a, there's more to it. But, but, that, but I mean, the idea that art quilts are not quilts, if you really look at the definition, they're not, they're not. And quilts under the current definition are not art. It's kind of exhilarating <laughs> because it's right there. It's like, sorry, but I mean, this is a, yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't think I'd go into the whole thing, but I did, but I did. It's, I eat and breathe this stuff right now. Anyway, yes, Padma makes a good point. The G's Ben, ben women were like, we didn't know we were making art. Well, they, they weren't, they were making quilts. And then these art people come and they say, oh, you had no idea how brilliant you were. You know, you were these artists who were anticipating modern art. I mean, if that's true, why doesn't the Met have more than like four quilts from the American South? They have four, at least four that are on the search engine. I would be very surprised if they were like, oh, no, no, we have 300 more. They don't, they don't. So they call them artists for a short time. They let the, the quilts play in the fields, play in the galleries, you know, but they don't hang a G's Ben quilt next to the Pollock in the permanent wing. That'd be the day. They don't, they, 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 they they're not, they, they entertain us. And that's, as, and that's, so, so all of this talk about art and craft and dissolving the hierarchy, the numbers don't really support that. And it's very, very interesting. It, uh, anyway, do you have thoughts, Steph? I'm sorry. I just, I mean, I really. You're far too tired and it's, it's too, yeah. too, too late of a night at this point. I, yeah, I, I continue to have thoughts about this. Right. And it was, you know, it was a, a it was a big thing when I was in art school because I went into the Department of Crafts, which yeah. was metalsmithing, yeah. textile stuff. You know, the textile department was like weaving. It was a lot of weaving and dyeing, but they, we had a quilter there too. And we were looked at as not real artists, but right. the painters, the school of painting. And, that, you know, I mean, like the knocked out jagout fights. I'm sure. I'm a pretty, I am pretty, I'm a, I'm a, sh I'm a shy violet. I don't, sure. I don't like, you know, confrontation. I was so ready to punch a teacher one day when I was, I was about 19 and I had never felt such rage and fury in my soul. Yeah. I with this man standing yes. in front of me telling yes. me that, you know, that's all well and good, but what you're planning to do next year going into this school, this, instead of painting or sculpture or whatever, uh, is foolish because you're not going to be making art anymore. Oh, man. Doesn't make you sad. And I'm just like, I am going to tear you lip from limb from limb. <laughs> like, it made me so mad. And I'm like, okay, so why am I in art school? Why do you call this art school? <laughs> you know? So, yeah. But there's yeah. so many, you know, that the whole the whole business with quilts, I think it makes me the most angry because forget, forget about quilts for a minute. And what mm -hmm. a lot of people were saying is, well, then, okay, what about those fancy like vases and urns and things like that you know what about a tiffany or lalique you know a piece of glass yeah you could probably put flowers in it but <laughs> right it's probably meant to be looked at and not used mm -hmm. but technically it could be I mean, yes you know, but that's it and no, it's very important there's no special rules around that though right really are there well you know, like if you put it on the table of flowers in it it's not ooh, hard anymore ooh, ooh. if you put it yep. in the case behind glass it is i mean I, it's the same thing with quilts, you know. <laughs> Look, here, this is this is important, and I, and I know you know the hour is late, and like I, I'll probably not read the thing tonight. I mean, be just because I you know we, you know, I just I care about you. I I don't want you guys to be like oh you know I got to go to sleep anyway. But we'll, we'll continue this discussion. But but here this is a very important work of art here that I'm going to show you. So so this is. Uh, here, look, this, okay, look at this thing. Um, 
you said, you know, a, a decorative a vase. It's very beautiful um, and could be used, technically could be used. Um, I mean, jewelry. Jewelry doesn't really have a use other than adornment. You're not hanging it on the wall. You hang it on your body. I mean. Yeah, yeah. But but you, but here, but you said it. You said it. Body. You said body. And that to me, because there's this other element on paper, it's very important. The body. The body is everything. If you use it with your body, on your body, with your body, it is, that's it. That's the separation. This is by, who is it? It's at MoMA. Um, Luncheon in Fur. This is a surrealist work, okay? And this, to me, is a very good example, and it's uh, Oppenheim. Who is it? Uh, Merritt Oppenheim, a Swiss artist. 1936, 23 years old. Bought it from a, a teacup for, in a department store in Paris. Covered it with this fur. This is art. You don't have to like it. You can think it's ridiculous, whatever. But by the de- but the definition of art is that it is an object created for the sole purpose of consideration, aesthetic judgment, judging it, thinking about it, considering it, whatever. You could try to drink out of this thing, but it ain't going to work. Right. And Stephanie's like, no, no. This is, by definition, by the definition that we have, okay, this is art. It is not utilitarian. It is not meant to be used, okay? Whereas a beautiful decorative vase, uh, Ming Dynasty, you know, uh, it, it can be used. You might not want to use it because you're going to break it and you're going to be murdered, right. you know, but it's here's still useful. Me, yeah. Here's the thing that makes me mad about this piece yeah. is conceptual art. I mean, obviously, I'm an artist. Yeah. I went yes. to art school. Like, I, yeah. this stuff, I love to look at yeah. stuff like this. Yeah. Because, I mean, art should make you think. Yep. But this, I <laughs> don't have a lot of respect for this because they took, clearly took a cup and saucer set yeah. and just glued some fur on it. Yeah. So there is no craftsmanship whatsoever here. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I like it. I, I do. I do like it. I do. I do. But please continue. <laughs> but this is it doesn't matter. Liking or not liking, it doesn't but matter. I think, Go on. I think that's where my bias yeah. is showing mm-hmm. as, you know, a person who is a hand, not just a quilter, but a hand quilter. I feel like not only when you have well, art should be. Even if it's hard to look at or gross yeah, or whatever, sure. shocking, it should still be well crafted, in my opinion. If it's going to make it to a museum. It should be well crafted. And, you know. Gluing a pelt to us, but but okay. I mean, I completely I love these discussions because I mean I understand, but like here's the problem with the with the craft. I, I understand definitely, but that's subjective because people because quilters exactly, right because quilters bias. came in yeah because you're in your train and 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 you have you're very I mean don't I'm not flattering you you're very technically good at at making I've seen your work and so it's like a thousand percent but there were quilters who saw you know, the G's Ben exhibit. And they were like, oh, unbelievable. You know, this is shoddy work. And it's like, I mean, compared to the tight stitches or something else, like I just, I think about that part of it too. And it's like, you would never say oh, that about G's Ben quilts, don't you know? understand because I'm not saying right. anything about shoddy work. I'm talking more about like the effort that you... You know, the whole idea of yep. duct, take, duct taping a banana to a wall, I mean, the, the thought process behind that, yes, yeah. I could totally get into that. But you know what, dude? Somebody paid you a trillion dollars to put a banana on a wall with duct tape. That makes me mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, sure. I could get with somebody who spent, you know, weeks on a painting and, you know, far, that's art. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, this is, this is it's it's such a good discussion it's like the most interesting discussion of all time what is the nature of art i mean this is a ming dynasty vase you know and by the current definition of art the definition that we have been working with since the 18th century which is that the fine arts are different from craft the fine arts are painting sculpture architecture music and poetry basically anything that is for any other purpose than aesthetic pleasure and aesthetic judgment is not art. And you look at something like this, this beautiful thing, this beautiful vessel that holds flowers for God's sakes. Can a painting hold flowers? Like, (laughs) no. So this thing is this beautiful work, 
by a skilled person. And that's this weird thing is that like skill became a bad word. Skill, skilled laborer became a bad thing. So like the person who made this and painted this at, from their hands, they made something from the earth. This was not allowed in basically. And this became, but you couldn't deny, they, they couldn't deny that it was pretty awesome. So it's like, okay, it's art, but it's decorative art. It's art, but it's applied art. It's art applied to something that's useful. And, and it's, it's, it's madness. It's, it's, it, to me, it is a problem. It is a problem. Well, that's, cre that's creating this special category for beautiful antiquities. Right, right. You know, antiquities, I mean, they all fall under this kind of weird, like, yeah, that is art. I mean, we, look, we right. go to museums to see this kind of stuff. And this kind of stuff is absolutely included in even contemporary shows to, you know, make the point like, oh, this is what we did back then, and yeah. then this is what it influenced, and yada yada. But I mean, again, it's creating this separate category to apply what your feelings are about this category of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And and one of the things that um, is part of this is like um, a painting is representational. Like like it's represent it's representational because it's representing something else. Like even if it's abstract, it's representing like feelings or it's like whatever. It's like you're, you're representing something and this is like, yeah. And a utilitarian object, an object that you use, it's not representing anything, which I think is very interesting. But, 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 but the flowers painted on it are. So that's art, that's painting, it's painting. They're representing flowers. You know when you look at that, you're not looking at flowers and vines, you're looking at a representation of it. So anyway. So, so, so this is not art under the current definition, under the definition we've been under, under the past 250 years, it's not art because you use it with the body. And this is art because it's just for consideration. And so therefore a quilt, though it can play in the halls of the art museums for a moment, though it can be touted and lauded and given in a little bit of room in the media for a little while this it may be seen as having aesthetic properties it may be seen as being artful it, and it by and i'm talking about by the art establishment i'm not by me but the art establishment can see this as having like relationship to abstract painting it can see it as like oh my god you know it's so great you know aesthetically it's great but because it is a quilt and a quilt is used by people, just like the vase, it's being used. And we know that it was made for use. It wasn't made for the wall. This is a traditional quilt made in Pennsylvania, 1880, okay? 1880, this was made, look, okay? This person did not make it for the wall. They made it for their kid, or they made it for their husband, they made it for their family. It survived and it's amazing. And some of these will hang in art museums but the art museums won't buy it for their permanent collection and they won't hang it in the halls and of the- And most of the time it's used to, to say, oh, look at this piece of art that this quilt is just like. Yes, exactly, absolutely. Look, compare it to a Rothko, right? I mean, that's a whole other thing. So it's like, I'm just, I'm just, it's just been like that the scales have sort of uh, been taken from my eyes. I forget how that goes. But like, it, it's just, I've really been looking, what is actually happening? Like they, they say quilts are art. And, and, and here's the problem is that people, like you just talked about cake. It's like your professor was like, well, you're making a huge mistake. You're not going to be making art anymore. The discussion is very important. It's very important because people are at stake. People who have been striving their whole life to have their artwork legitimized by the art establishment, which makes sense. There's opportunity, there's money, there's, there's no, no, of course you want to be recognized by the art establishment. It's easy to be like, eh, who needs them? You know, you can't fire me, I quit. I don't even care. No, if you want money and like grants and like shows and stuff, of course you want in. Makes sense, of course. But like people work their whole lives to be like seen as legitimate artists and they're, they call themselves art quilters. And because that word is attached, you know, it's like, we need to maybe look at this. What is actually happening? The art world doesn't think quilts are art. So maybe you're just making art because if it's for the wall, that's what you're making. It's an aesthetically judged object. That's it. It's never supposed to be wrapped. You couldn't wrap, there's quilts made of wood. And, and traditional quilters are like, that's not a quilt. And I used to be like, ah, yes, it is. No, it is 
isn't. <laughs> it's not. It's not because a quilt is made to be used by a body. And so if you make well, a, quilt, a quilt, also has three layers. A quilt also has three layers. It's true, but I think the three layers is that is part of this. But it's you know you can have like a summer quilt or something that has two. So so but 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 if it's quilted together, if it's two layers of quilted together, yes. So. If it's meant to be used by somebody, like it's a utilitarian object. And by the current definition of art, those are not art. And so it's been kind of like, I've been like, like, like just like a little like troll, like in the office, like, nah, 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 like trying to get this thing finished. And, I, and the other day I was like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> you know, Eureka. It was like, shit. And sorry. And I, I don't know. I feel like without kind of having this whole discussion, like it's a very provocative thing to say, like quilts aren't art and art quilts aren't quilts. Like that's like this big argument that's going on for 50 years. But like, I think that actually it's quite simple. It's not a, it's not a quilt if it's on the wall and it never was meant for a person. It's art, it's great, it's art, you're free. You're making art, no, you never have to explain again. And if you're making a quilt for a person, it's wonderful, but the art establishment will never actually give you that. So let it go or burn it down. Burn the whole damn thing down. I'd rather burn it down. Amen. Yes. We have a big problem. Art should be art I can art make it should be different. All day long. All day long. Yeah. I can yeah. poke some holes. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean I don't yes. envy, I don't envy you thinking and writing about this topic, Mary, because it <sighs> It's it's such a big one. It's. I mean, oh my god, oh my god, and and you you have come up with so many brilliant things. Like I've seen. I mean, your lecture last year at AQSG was incredible, and well, well, really I mean, need to think about even think more about this. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad, and and the thing that I, I won't talk about now, I you know, you know a little bit about the Nietzsche stuff, the Apollo and Dionysus, but like the thing, the problem with all, the only way we're gonna get out of this mess is if we actually figure out why textiles were not included in that special group of things why weren't textiles included with the painting sculpture poetry architecture music uh, elite group of art why and I think I know why <laughs> I have a theory about why and if we identify that if we push through this art versus craft discussion and actually get to why textiles were ghettoized then maybe we can burn it down. But until we actually look at why, which is to say they are related to the body and the feminine. I'm Before we do that, until we do that. Yes, yes, hope. Girl, you got it. Jill's got it. Slim's got it. Yeah, why? Exa Finn, 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 yes, Finn. Part of the thing that I'm saying is it can't, but, but it can't be just about gender. It can't be just about gender because men were weavers, men were quilters, men have worked with textiles. So it's not just gender. It's, it is that, but it isn't just that. It isn't just racial because people in Europe were making textiles, you know, so that like, people all over, the, all over the world make textile art, beautiful tapestries, beautiful things. So it's not just gender and it's not just race and it's not just economics because oil paint and Chinese silk, like paint was cheaper to make than it was to get Indian chintz. So like, there's gotta be something else. And I think that I know what it is. So that's what I'm writing. It's super easy. I'm totally gonna be done in time. <laughs> oh my God, I gotta go, what the hell? I just love talking to you guys so much. I love you so much. Um, people with the money make the rules, Jacob. Well, I mean, that's, that should be part of my paper. Like that's like part of the conclusion basically, anyway. I'm showing you just pictures of quilts. So, okay, thank you so much. And here we thought you were going to end early because of the, the parade. And here we've gone over 15 minutes. Ah, you gotta go. See what you guys do. <laughs> you have conversations. You have conversations. You engage with each other and the material. And, you know, that's why quilts matter, man. We get to talk about art and, like, what, come on, what else is there? It's so great. We've just had a philosophical discussion about the nature of art itself. And we started with this quilt. Come on. What else are you going to do on a Tuesday night? That's this good. Okay. Um, love y'all. Yes. Wonky. Yes. Yes. Okay. Love you so much. Take care. Um, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, Cake. I love you so much. We will uh, I'll see you.
Thank you.